Hey guys, it's Camelia. So I am here at the pet glider. Wow, there are so many cages. I've never seen this many gliders in one place. in Houston. Look behind me. This is this is crazy. We're gonna see a lot of sugar gliders. So uh, for the first video, we're mostly gonna be looking at the different colors that they offer. Basically just how they keep them in their cages and how they manage with all of these gliders. And then we'll look at supplies and cages that they sell. And this is Angel and she's gonna be giving us the tour. So let's look at some gliders. So the Pet Glider is one of the largest and most well-known glider facilities out there. And as of this video, currently has almost every color of glider available, as well as over 11 staff members that are constantly providing care and stimulation for the animals. The Pet Glider was originally founded by Priscilla Price, someone known as one of the foremost authorities in sugar glider husbandry over 19 years ago. I am going to be asking them questions about how they handle keeping that many gliders, including feeding, human interaction, caging, etc. If you can think of any questions that I may have missed after you watch the full video, please leave them in the comments or you can contact the Pet Glider on Instagram, Facebook, or on their website. Stay tuned for the second video that I filmed here where I pick out my new pair of shuggies and it will be up within a week of this one. Let's get started. So, um, how did you guys decide what was big enough and, you know, how to keep up with this many sugar gliders? So, the minimum recommended size is three feet tall and two and a half feet wide, which is this one up here. Okay. We have these size cages um, just for our purposes, only because we are a large facility and we need to keep track of all our gliders this way. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the goal is to actually switch over to these big cages. And so, we're in the process of doing that. So, right now, we're focusing on the top, moving all the way back, and then once we covered all the tops, we're going to go back again and switch to the tall cages at the bottom. So so you're talking about from like that cage over there to these. Yes. Oh, so it's like twice the size. Yeah. So we want to give our gliders the best. We want to spoil them. And yeah. so our recommended size is three feet. And so that's what we're hoping to go to. We keep um, breeding pairs, breeding trios, and most of these cages. The rest of the cages you see are mostly offsprings, cage mates, best friends. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh, super spoiled. Yes. Yeah. So the ultimate, wow. ultimate end goal is to actually end up with these cages. Oh wow, you might have to upgrade to a bigger place for that. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess these gliders, the ones available, aren't even in those cages for that long anyways, probably. Yeah, so they're only there temporarily until we are able to get in, uh, the bigger cages. They're on their way now, so that's what we're hoping to switch over to. So how do you keep up with this many gliders? How many people do you have working here? Um, so about a staff of 10 people on site mm -hmm. uh, working here that keeps track of all these gliders. We do have vendors all over that you know sell our products, do... Um, our booking and flight and stuff like that. So this is Primavera. She's going to answer a couple more questions for us. How do you guys make sure that they're all healthy and how do you make sure that they get socialization when you have this many gliders? So we have about three of us who cut nails, play with them, check on the babies. Um, we also have someone who actually washes their cages. So every month they get their nails clipped and their cage washed. We also um, have so many breeding gliders that we um, do have to check on the babies um, and that's what the cage washer does too because he'll, he'll let us know that oh there's a baby in this pouch okay let's go check it to mm -hmm. see how old the baby is and record it and put it in our system oh and you have to check on them frequently yes I guess we do have yeah. to check on the babies frequently to socialize them we do have somebody that goes in there and plays with them and interacts with them because we want it to make sure that our gliders are as teamed as possible. And I mean, the pet glider has a reputation for having like the friendliest gliders out of the bigger breeders. Yes, we do. So. Um, yes, and that's the point of it. We wanted to make sure that they get the experience of having a, a well-tamed sugar glider. And that yeah. was one of the things we talked about, about having somebody to go in there and interacting with them so they can have that, not bonding yet, but that step to bond. Then that's the other thing. You don't want to spend too much time with one glider so it bonds to you. Yes. So yeah. we try not to. That's why we maybe five, ten minutes let them interact with humans because that's mm -hmm. what we want them to do. And hold them every day and hold get them, them every all day out. and get them out. Um, we don't want them to crab too much. So that's the part of that job will be to kind of get them used to humans. So when they do see humans, um, when we do show them to other people or when we show them 
people say, oh, I, I want to see these gliders, they'll see how well maintained they are. So does every glider, or at least the younger ones, get out for like five minutes every day? Or do uh, you the younger ones alternate? We alternate. They mm -hmm. need to be with their moms and learn everything from the other gliders. But after that, yeah. you will notice that the babies crab more than the others just because they're not used to human contact yet because they're only babies. After two months, they'll start seeing us more and more often. The more they see us, the more they get used to human contact. We also have someone who actually washes their cages. The way we clean it is we use actually a pressure washer. Pressure washer, wow. Yes, but with us, we use a pressure washer and the way we get the smell from coming out is um, half vinegar and half water. That's we what use I use too. <laughs> vinegar and water or we use the chlorhexidine oh. and then mix. It just depends on the smell. Because honestly, it smells like good in here. It doesn't even smell like sugar gliders to me. Oh, I know. People who have sugar gliders like, this is not as bad as I would think it would be. Every cage gets washed once a month, just wow. like how we advise you guys to wash every month. So with the cages, we will wash the cages, but we won't wash the toys or the pouches. Mm -hmm. We alternate. alternate right? We alternate yeah. it so they won't get scared or they won't be like, oh my God, this is a new environment. And then over mark and pee everywhere. Yes. Right. Because if you do that, then yes. Yes, you're right. They're yeah. gonna want to mark their territory big time because mm -hmm. they're like, nothing smells like me. So every cage has at least one pouch, um, a couple of toys, and a, a raptor wheel? Or? Yes. So their main toy will be the wheel. That is their main toy and that's what um, they are used the most and that gives them the exercise and everything they need. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main things you do have to put in there. And so I guess for your breeder cages, they have quite a bit more options. So our breeder cages will have more toys in there, mm -hmm. but just like with any breeder, once the gliders get to producing ages, we pull them out and put them in uh, another cage and that's the ones we sell. And that's these? Yeah. But you guys are currently upgrading these to that size? Yes, we are. That's awesome. Hi. Look at this little one. Uh, you want a worm, don't you? <laughs> They're like, that's my treat. So used to getting worms. <laughs> I hey. remember last time I was here, she did that. Hey. <laughs> So do they all get mealworms as treats? Or? Yes, they do. Especially our breeding pairs and our mommies. So, oh, so most of them are used to taking treats from your hand. And yes. Is she this a one's like. Yes, yeah, she is a mom. There you go. <laughs> Look at that little face. So yes, um, especially when they have babies, we do try to give them as many mealworms. Protein. As, uh, protein because they're gonna need it more than the other ship gliders. That sound. Is that a baby sneezing? Hey, boo -boo. <laughs> Oh, good. So when I first came here, uh, once before, I walked in here and it smelled really good, which is surprising. And if you look at the floors, they're pretty clean too. So you guys know how I am, that I really, really care about this kind of thing. I think these cages are adequate for, you know, housing a glider temporarily before you find it a home. But they did say that they're upgrading all of these. So these here that you see are temporary. And they're gonna soon have all of their babies in those bigger cages, which is awesome. So how many colors of gliders do you guys have? We carry 13 different types of colors. <laughs> Classics, white face blondes, caramels, um, leucistic platinums, mosaics, piebalds, um, what am I missing? Black beauties, black face black beauties. Ruby leucistics, ruby platinums, and then red gliders. There's there eggs? Albinos. We call them <laughs> albinos. <laughs> so do you guys have the Harley gliders, uh, melanistic? So we do not. Um, melanistics are not actually a trait that you want to do. Um, melanistics mm -hmm. are from two black face but black beauties, and they do not live long if they're produced um, because of health reasons. Yeah, I saw they have very sparse fur. And yeah, so very sparse furs, very thin tails. Um, they don't really live very long, so we don't really breed for melanistics. We do have black face and black beauties that we can show. Cool, that's awesome. I think that's great. Uh, okay, so what colors should we look at first? Um, I guess I'll do classics and mosaics first. Aww. So the first colors that you guys offer are the... These are classics and then these are mosaics. So mosaics are different types of colors. Um, you never get one of the same color. They are a variety of patterns on the glider. So that's why mosaics are very fun, very unique. Um, yeah. Always looking different. Uh, yeah. This guy looks like he's wearing a scarf. <laughs> so this she. one is actually Dad. Oh, it's Dad. That's Dad. Is Mom, he neutered? He is neutered. Oh, he's adorable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> and she's a white mosaic? Yes, yeah, she is. 
Wow, she really has barely any pattern yeah. at all. And are these babies? Yes, so these are her, these are their kids. So this one right here is Aww. a classic, and he's Marlon. He's my absolute favorite Whoa. classic. He's super, super sweet. Oh, he's big. He is Man, a They boy. really like that diet, don't oh, yeah. they? Wow, they are super friendly. So these are all available. Um, Dad and Mom are obviously retired, ready yeah. to go to their homes. Mm -hmm. They'd be under the best friends section. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they're available too. Yes. It's, I believe, Varlam, and then his brother over here would be under Cage Mates for two thirty nine right now, I believe. How often do you update the website availability? So we we do put them on the website often, and we do go back and remove gliders that have been sold off the website as well. And then the the prices vary from month to month. Um, sometimes we'll have specials running from like four months. Sometimes we'll switch it out every month. So it's always something to look forward to. Right now our specials are $159 for the pair of best friends, which are three years or older. These are retired gliders just ready to go to the good home. And then we have cage mates who are five months to up to three years old. And these are gliders that are either siblings or gliders that are like from different families and we introduce them together. And so we would prefer them if they got sold together. And those can be will be two thirty nine for the pair or trio shown. Do you guys usually neuter the males? We do. So we neuter all of our males before they go to the good home or to their new home unless you are buying for breeding. If you're buying for breeding then we will, you know, obviously not neuter males. Mm -hmm. uh, so the importance of neutering is that intact males are a little bit more aggressive, a little bit territorial. And so you can't really house two intact males together. They will fight for territory. Neutered males are essentially the same as females. They don't have the hormones in there. They'll grow back the hairs on their heads. And so the set gland here on the chest and set gland on top of their heads. And so this is what they'll use to mark the females when they mate with them. And so once you neuter the males, they're pretty much the same as females. You can house them with other gliders if they've been neutered for a long time, which I want to say about five months or older, or five months or more would be a safe time to introduce gliders. And because gliders need to be kept in pairs, it's very important that if you do have a male to get it neutered so you can keep it with other gliders, unless of course you're breeding, which then again, we'd recommend going through the database to get lineage <laughs> on your gliders. <gasps> oh. So I've got Platinums and Criminos, a classic. Oh, I love Criminos. Criminos are cream-colored gliders with red eyes. Why is he sniffing like that? <laughs> hey. This is actually, this is Mommy. These are her kids, so okay. this is Mommy, Dad, somewhere back here. Oh, this is Dad. Dad's a Platinum. So typically they start off at $4.99 uh, starting price. If you're buying, you know, as a pet or as breeding, breeding can go up to like $8.99 or more depending on the glider itself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's crabbing, that's usually when they're scared or when you leave them alone. So that, that sounded like a little baby or a younger glider. So I think I see one way back here. That is a huge glider. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's you. You're the one crabbing. Aww. So this one's a younger glider. So she's about four months old. Oh my gosh. Is this... He's what, huge. Is this dad? No, or? that's son. So he's oh neutered. My. Yeah. <laughs> so neutered males are actually like... They get fat. <laughs> oh, when you get a male, they tend to get fat. <laughs> so lessen the amount of mealworms, I guess, right? Okay, so this is dead. Mm -hmm. So this one's albino and black beauty. So albino's right here. So a black beauty is just like a classic but much darker. So they'll have like a very black stripe and then their overall body will be a darker shade of gray. So it was just two classics, really dark classics, bred together bred together until they became what's called a black beauty. So black beauties are just very, very, very dark classics. I like the albinos, they're cute. <laughs> and the difference between an albino and a leucistic is the color of their eyes, right? Right, so albinos are all white with red eyes. Leucistics are all white with black eyes. Grumpy looking. <laughs> so do you love sugar gliders? I do. They're very, very fun. <laughs> very smart, actually. Do you have any of your own? I do. I have four oh. gliders of my own. So some so albinos cute. will have like a stripe on top of their head. Some will even have like a very, very faint marking on their back, as well as some coloring on the tip of their tails. Oh. So in order to determine if it's an albino or like a ruby blue or ruby plat, you want to look through the database and check out the genetics, like the family line. Awesome. That's why lineage is so yes. important. So these are the They're ones so that can create um, a melanistic, right. right? So this is a black face. You will get a melanistic if you do two black faces. It's not recommended that you do. It does come with health like problems if you do that. Beauty. You want to breed a black face to a black beauty non-black face line. So if you go, if you get a black face and then you get a black beauty, make sure that black beauty does not come from a black face line at all. That makes sense. I think it's really cool that you guys don't breed them because of the health issues. Right. And so you can tell the difference between a black face and a black beauty. Black faces um, have a lack of eye rings around their face. 
oh. and so it gives the illusion of having a full black face you see how she's like completely dark but she has no eye rings and this yeah. one he has eye rings so that's what like makes it kind of cool i know there's a super super dark one in here so wow. this one we're actually keeping maybe one day we can make an all black glider that's actually <laughs> healthy so that's the goal so we're taking the darkest black face the darkest black beauty and putting them together so we're going to keep him and we're actually retiring dad so these are tpm's true platinum mosaics platinum mosaic so he's platinum colored and he has a separation on his back that gives us the mosaic look as well as mm -hmm. all white tail oh and a white tip tail too and so mom is actually another tpm so she did have a platinum stripe on her back but it's faded out because she's a little bit older now mm -hmm. and so these guys put together actually gave us ruby loose ruby plats they also gave us a bunch of tpms hey want some worms <laughs> worms oh that's a gruesome very yeah, so platinums are more a silvery color and you can see it's the stripe from the top of his head all the way down with the gray body and then like a mostly <laughs> Mostly dark tail and then here's a leucistic. Oh, I love leucistics. I have a leucistic. Yeah, leucistics all white <laughs> clear ears white tail black eyes What do you usually sell your platinums and leucistics for? Uh, typically starting off at $4.99 <laughs> That was cute. And that's for pet homes? Yes. And that includes a neuter for males? Mm -hmm. So all of our prices are already have the neutering price included. Excuse me. <laughs> right here. This is a red. Aww. Compared this to a classic. So that's the difference. So it's a type of morph. Wow. It's just a very strawberry colored glider. Wow, they're so cute. Yeah. They super, super them. rare. It's Dad. Dad's Cremino. Hey, buddies. Ours are really Wait, tell, spoiled. Don't get my finger, but here. That was rude of him. <laughs> We just took it from her. <laughs> so the pet glider also has a super wide array of caging toys, wheels, and pouches and all that. They're going to show us all the stuff they have. So our most popular ones would be the yoga drops, of course. Um, also the live mail worms are the um, top seller. Oh yeah. Yoga drops will be second. All the fruits will probably be third. It just depends. Certain weeks we will ship more than others, but I mean, it, it all depends on who's buying. And then a lot of the times we do have a lot of people who buy the flowers. Oh, that's cool. Um, this is dried flower. Mm -hmm. So this is a carnation. Flowers. These are rose petals. So do you ship all of this? Yes, I do ship all of this. Our best sellers are the nutritional packs. I ship a lot of those. It could come in 180s or 360s. And it This stuff here? This. And it'll come with this and then your vitamins, either a 180 or a 360. And so this is like an add-on to the TPG diet, right? This is their snacks. I call snacks. it snacks. The TPG diet is a mixture of fresh fruits and veggies, applesauce, yogurt, oatmeal, orange juice, and then your protein, which can either be eggs or ground turkey, sometimes chicken. All of that's mixed together and then frozen into little ice cube trays or little Ziploc bags, whatever's convenient for you. You feed them once a day, every day. And so this right here is just a snack for them. It's just an extra source of protein. It's not their main meal. You just put it in a bowl, you leave it out for them. Sometimes they'll eat it, sometimes they won't. Okay. And so the essential part of the TPG diet is the vitamins, which you'll sprinkle on top of their food before you serve it to them. That has the calcium that they need. You never want to skip out on that. It is made here. It is human grade, so all of the ingredients are super good for them. You can also eat it yourself if you chose to. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> so our vitamins are our number one product seller. So our diet is a little bit more work, but it is more balanced diet, I want to say. That way gliders aren't picking and choosing what they want to eat. Right. So this diet was created by Priscilla herself. She talked to many veterinarians and compiled this diet like just for the gliders. And how many years has this been in use, this diet? So she has been using this diet for, I want to say, almost 20 years. Wow, 20 years. Yes. Is this just like cleaning stuff here? It is. Odor remover both products the live the live pet free as well as the healthy habitat do you recommend glass bottles um we recommend glass bottles because gliders can chew on the plastic and it's better to be safe than sorry oh i didn't think about they could chew on the plastic yeah. so ah. these are raptor wheels these wheels are made just for us um we have a guy that makes them for us um awesome. and so these are completely flat on the back uh glider safe you don't want anything with the bar or a little bar in the middle of it gliders have really long tails and so when they run they're actually kind of bouncing on it and so you don't want their tails to get caught up in it it'll cause injuries mm -hmm. and they are 100 percent silent Oh my gosh, that's awesome. It does last you a lifetime, so which is a good thing. It is pricier when you first get it, but compared to like a lifetime of like... Buying wheels. Yeah. The stainless steel, it is $84. The plastic ones are $64. It is free shipping if you choose to get one wheel. Oh, so this is the steel one. Yes. 
so you see the tracks, the steel tracks, and then this is a plastic yeah. track. So the only difference is that some gliders do chew plastic. Um, that's why some people will get the stainless steel ones versus the plastic. All of our wheels come with like little nail trimming inserts on both sides. We don't cover the whole wheel only because gliders do like to like grip onto the wheels when mm -hmm. they run. And so you don't want them to be gripping on nothing but the tracks all the time. And plus it's easier for when they poop and pee, it falls through the little, that's little openings and stuff. So this is our Queensland cage. This is the biggest cage size we offer at our, like at our store. Uh, everything you see in it is a bundle itself. So the bundle right here starts off at $5.99. Free shipping, of course. Oh, free shipping. Comes with all of the toys you see, the little sleeping pouch, the little wheel, the nutritional pack at the bottom, treats, as well as a water bottle and the stand, of course. So all of our toys are actually made here. We have a toy maker who makes all the toys for us. So oh, that we, sounds fun. <laughs> so we have cork toys, we have eucalyptus, and then we have fleece. And so the thing with cork, or the benefit of cork, is that they help wear down your glider snails. And it's also fun for them to chew at as well. And so things like this, like the little cork logs, they like to go in there, hang out, because they like to hide in some things. <laughs> eucalyptus, they love to chew on the branches. They love the smell of eucalyptus. And then the fleece toys, they like anything soft and warm, so they'll like rub themselves on it. The cool thing with these vines is that they are reset toys, so you can actually pull on the leaves. <gasps> what? Yeah, so you'll pull oh on the leaves, and it's fun for the gliders, and then you just have to insert it back. <laughs> I kind of want one of those. I might get one of these. <laughs> I just feel like, how do you wash that without you, it going everywhere? You Actually, you can just throw it in the washing machine just fine. Oh. Just don't dry it. Oh, that's a gourd! Yeah, so they love things like coconut scores that they can go and hang out. All of our, oh. or most of our gourds and coconuts will come with like little sh uh, cups that you can throw treats in there. Cute! Everything you see is on the website. Awesome. If there's something here that you see that is not on the website, contact us and then we will like send it out to you. Glider pods. These are easy to clean as plastic, so you just get like baby wipes and you wipe it down. Oh, yeah. And there are coolies on it as well. No. At the bottom. Yep. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> These are so fun. These as well. So toys that they can pull or the little plastic rings, yeah. they'll actually wrap their tails around it and then take it back into their pouch. Mm -hmm. oh. So if you have a toy that's close enough to their sleeping pouch, they'll try to pull it into their pouch. And so sometimes you'll see it like <laughs> sticking out like this. <laughs> I might get one of these too. I like all of these. These are cool. And these are like foraging toys, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Platters like things that make to noise. Mm -hmm. So if you have this, you'll hear it at night. Just a bunch of shaking. <laughs> Oh, ball pits! Yeah! So bonding pouches, or pouches with a zipper and a mesh on it, is the safest way to travel with your gliders, as well as the like best way to bond with them. So these are our most popular ones, simple one. Mm -hmm. You have your gliders in here, you'll wear it inside your shirt, and they'll just smell you and hear your voice all day. So, oh, so you recommend wearing it inside your shirt? You can wear it inside, you can wear it outside. Inside is probably better, that way you're not like, they're not bouncing all over the place when mm -hmm. you're doing things. So we carry different types of bonding pouches. We'll have the tote, we'll have, it looks like a seat cushion today. A <laughs> seat cushion? <laughs> kind of looks like a purse, yeah. So these actually are, it's a whole mesh all around. Whoa. And then there, there's like a little plastic thing insert at the bottom. In case for easy cleaning, yes. And so you toss this in the washing machine uh -huh. and these two you can just wipe down. So all of our cage sets come with because with the sleeping pouch you'll need clips to hang it up on the cage also comes with a little bridge cute the little fleece vine oh. yeah. that's cool so all of them do come with cage clips so you don't have to worry about that and that's the four piece cage set yes so these are open environment pouches. These are mostly used for crabby gliders or gliders who are pouch protective. So it's wide and open like this. So they can actually peek out and see what's happening. Unlike, you know, something like this where it's mostly just hidden and they have to crawl out to see what's happening. Oh, I see. So pouch protective gliders um, prefer open ones so that way they can check out before they like, you know, freak out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of the Pet Gliders facility in Houston, Texas. My experience there was a positive one. Um, I personally believe that there is always room for everyone to grow and change and learn when it comes to animals, and I will probably always have that mindset. But I did have a great experience visiting the Pet Glider, and everything that I saw was expertly made and discussed. Check out their website at thepetglider.com, follow them on Instagram and Facebook at The Pet Glider, and follow me on my social media is at Catalia. Next weekend I will be uploading the part two of this series where I pick out my new pair of lineage mosaic sugar gliders. Stay tuned and thanks for watching!